All right, so today's quiz is what ethereal vibe do you give off? Let's jump right in. So question one is choose a picture to be teleported into right now. And all the photos seem to be of various locations. First one is this weird green, yellow, neon. Not neon, but it's got this weird lighting. The um, polished reflective surfaces and the setup for the lighting is really pretty, but the greenish yellow hue they got going on kind of reminds me of a lime. I don't really like the taste of lime, especially not straight up, so that's off the bat. Pretty big knock against it. The second picture, I don't know if it's of like an apartment or whatever, but there seems to be a lot of art, a lot of paintings, a lot of like art supplies laying around. It's a little messy, looks a little kind of weird, and I don't really know what's going on in the background. If, if that's like the ocean, or it looks like it could be even like sand. For some reason, it makes me think of being like isolated in the desert. It's probably not sand, but that's just the vibe it gives off to me. It's a bit off. The third picture is of some sort of study with, there seems to be a chess game set up. All of that's nice, but the big problem is there's this really spooky like hallway there. There's like one ominous light, like it feels to me, I feel almost like a deep sea fish stumbling across an angler fish about to get eaten. I don't care for that at all. I am, I don't really want to get eaten by a fish, so I'm going to stay away from this option here. The fourth picture is, looks like it's, I don't know if it's just a hallway. To me, my first instinct is that this is like a train. It looks like there's a window open blowing a curtain. I don't, honestly, I'm not a big fan of the window being open. Like, the reason I think it's on a train is because, to me, at least, it looks like there's motion blur out the window. Hopefully, someone's house... Like the hallway in someone's house isn't going to be moving relative to the countryside. Overall, I think this one's pretty good. I'm not a big fan of the window being open. Like, based on how in motion the curtain looks, it looks like there's a lot of wind coming in. I I get that shut at least a bit. But other than that, it everything looks, it checks out. Like, the pale lighting and all that. And the um, kind of plain tiling is a bit spooky, but I think that's going to be kind of the vibe for every picture, so it's not really a criticism against this picture specifically. Our fifth picture is of what appears to be a kitchen. I think is a kitchen. I mean, it looks like there's a fridge there. It's a little on the small side. I'm guessing that's a painting in the back, this big circular thing. The reason I'm not certain that it's a kitchen, like we've, you've got a table and a fridge, but on the right, that looks almost like a CD rack or something. It's, it's, this room's a little confusing. I'm not a big fan of it. The sixth picture is just like a library, I guess. It's a bit plain, but it's not bad. Like, believe it or not, I have been to a library before, so it's not really anything out of the ordinary. All right, our seventh picture. It's got a nice background. There's a shot of the sky with a nice crescent moon, but that's not really, I don't know if that's considered part of the location or not. The actual room itself, there's some like outdoors looking chairs. And there's curtains, but they're white and they're really, like, see-through. If you're in that room you got a headache and it's bright out, you're gonna... Those curtains aren't gonna do you much any favors. Maybe, maybe this is an outdoor patio and those aren't curtains at all and I'm just, like, dumb. That's, that's always a possibility. Keep that in mind when you're watching my videos. Me just being stupid is always an option. Alright, and our eighth picture is of looks like a big kind of greenhouse and there's someone coming in i think maybe that's a statue either way the framing's kind of spooky it, this picture is well framed but it's kind of ominous with the way everything's open around the uh figure it's definitely to me it's not a welcoming sight right and this was the last picture to me it's a toss-up between the um weird faux train place or the library i'm gonna go with the train i'm in a library a lot more often than i'm in a train and so i'm I'm gonna go with the more unique setting. Unique to me at least. Question two is pick a beautifully uncommon word. All right, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and like cross-reference these two. Our first choice is diaphanous. The definition given is sheer and light, almost transparent. And the definition given here, definition two is almost transparent, so that's fair enough. They give an example of a woman wearing an overskirt. This seems a little odd to me. Their second option is syzygy, which is defined as the alignment of celestial bodies and planets. Yeah, this is referring to like 
eclipses and that sort of thing. Syzygy is an alright word, but it seems like it's trying a bit too hard with like the only having wise thing. The astronomy theme, it's, I like astronomy, but it's, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Our third option is Selkuth, which is given as unfamiliar and strange yet marvelous. And the d definition they give here doesn't have the yet, it just is just referring to like strange. Selkuth to me gives kind of like a mythological vibe, not, but not in a good way. It, it reminds me of like a cross between like Selkie and uncouth, like, like an uncouth Selkie. It doesn't really sound like something I'd want to deal with, so I'm not really feeling this one. Our fourth option is Welve, and the definition given is to bury something deep to hide. And the dictionary I am using does not list it as a word, so that's um, it's a bit suspicious. A Google search shows that Merriam-Webster has a definition for it. They give it as to turn upside down, usually to cover something, and they say like as a dish or vessel which is a fair bit different than the definition they give. Turning over a dish isn't super thrilling, at least to me. Bigger concern though is well, to me it sounds a lot like wharf, like as to do with fishing. I'm a little suspicious of the ocean in general, so I'm I'm not feeling this one either. The fifth option is redomancy. The definition given is the act of loving the one who loves you, a love returned in full, which is uh, backed up here. Redomancy in and of itself sounds kind of cool, like it sounds like a form of magic or whatever, but it's the actual definition is kind of boring, at least for me. And our sixth and final word is lagom. The definition given is not too little, not too much, just right. Not really the same as what they give. Here it's listed as a philosophy or ethos of trying to achieve balance. They list it as coming from the Swedish word, which does mean just right. I think I'm going to end up going with syzygy. It's not my favorite word, but it's, I think it's got the best vibe of all of these. I mean, like, eclipses are pretty cool. Certainly cooler than, like, flipping over dishes, so let's keep going. Question three is who would you be in a horror movie? First option is the person that gets killed off, to be honest. I may or may not be the right kind of person to kill first. The second choice is the antagonist, which definitely I could go with. I mean, I live on a farm and we definitely have that like killing teens kind of vibe out here, so I could see myself. The only problem is I'm, I don't think I'd be quite good enough with like weapons to be uh, an effective antagonist. If I was, I'd have to take a more like indirect role, which um, actually could end up working out in my favor. It could make the movie more interesting. So that's, that's an idea. The third choice is the dumb hero who somehow always escapes capture and nothing bad really happens to them. The idea of nothing bad really happens kind of disqualifies me from this one right off the that. Also, escaping capture, I'm not a good, like, escaper. The fourth option is the friendly spirit who's just here to have a good time. I don't think I would end up being, like, friendly or having a good time in a horror movie, so that's probably not gonna be me. The fifth option is the martyr who is definitely not gonna be me. And the sixth and final option is the love interest of the hero which honestly if being the love interest was my like the narrative force keeping me alive in a horror movie i would probably just let the antagonist kill me i i would not want to be like a love interest especially not in like a horror setting like being like hunted down and killed and then just having your role just being for someone else to want to get with that doesn't sound like a good time for me i'm gonna go with the antagonist i think the the first choice, the first person that gets killed off, is probably a better, probably a more accurate choice. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna go a bit wishful filly here and go the antagonist. All right, question four is pick a topic to discuss with a complete stranger at a train station at two in the morning. 
Option one is how you somehow both seem to be listening to the same exact song, and one of you heard the others over your headphones and decided to speak up. That could happen, but it would have to be the other person to speak up. I don't think I'd have the courage to, like, bring it up if I heard someone else listening to a song I liked. The other and probably bigger problem to me with this one is that I would be a bit concerned if someone was listening to, like, the same kind of music that I like, especially at two in the morning at a train station. I would be concerned about like the stability of a person who's vibing like that, especially if they decided to talk to me. So that's, um, I'm not liking that one. Option two is the two other strangers across the tracks keep making eyes at each other, and the person next to you rolls their eyes and scoffs at how silly they're being, and they should just make out already, enticing you to start a conversation. Making eyes sounds pretty gross. Like, I've done, like, dissections in biology in high school, and there's, like, a lot of gross stuff in the eyes. I don't, I don't think I'd want to see that. Actually, first off, if other people, if I saw two people making eyes at each other at a train station, I'd assume that they're already, like, in a relationship, and I don't want to see them making out in public. And secondly, I think the implications of this, at least thinking in terms of, like, movie kind of narrative terms, are that my conversation would then also have kind of romantic subtext, which I am, I am not for. Definitely not with a complete stranger. Also, that seems a little rude, like making fun of people in public. It's not a good thing to do, even, even if their love is gross. Our third option is that somewhere, in some other lifetime, you two have probably met before in a similar situation as this, and remain strangers. Personally, I trust my past lives. I think if we had remained strangers in a past life, I was probably for the best. I wouldn't want to start, like, messing around with fate. I feel like this would have some, like, bad ontological consequences, so I'd shy away from that. Our fourth option is the fact that technology is being developed too quickly for any human to consume on a regular and healthy basis. Which to me has kind of, um, given how everything is, to me this seems like a good topic of conversation if you're, like, 60. Maybe I'm being a little closed-minded, but this to me kind of has, like, those weird comics you see old people sharing on Facebook vibes. Definitely not the kind of thing I'd want to talk about with a stranger at 2 in the morning. Our fifth option is gas prices TBH WTF is that all about? I don't fully know like the economics of gas prices. I've heard vaguely a bunch of stuff about it. I wouldn't really consider myself informed enough to be to be talking with a stranger. I'm kind of approaching this as if I'm going to be talking to like a world-class expert and going to be judged on my opinions on gas prices. That's kind of how I approach conversations in general. And the sixth option is whether Twilight was a good movie slash book series or if it's all just about the nostalgia nostalgia of it all. I haven't read or seen Twilight, but I don't, I don't know how many of like the fans, people who are fans of it currently are. The implication I think with this option is that people are only liking Twilight because they read it so long ago, which would imply that they didn't like it when they first read or watched it because otherwise they would just be like fans who are still fans. I mean, I'm not an expert, but I can't see that being a common thing of people not liking Twilight when it first came out and then like warming to it by nostalgia. I could be wrong though. Yeah, honestly, um, the only two options that really resonate with me at all are the, um, listening to the same song choice and the Twilight choice. And I don't know how long I could sustain a conversation about a band. As I've said, I've never seen or read Twilight, but I still think I could talk about it from like an external perspective. Especially at like 2 in the morning, that's the right time to be talking about stuff like that, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick it. Question 5 is pick a dreamlike memory that startles you like deja vu when you least expect it. Option 1 is falling off a swing and scraping your knees, but it doesn't hurt because you've been promised an ice cream cone and you're pretty sure you can hear the ice cream truck making its way down the street. Based on where I am, I'm not really in range of any ice cream trucks, but I can get, like, the vibe they're going for, and I definitely can relate. Like, I'm- even now, I try not to show any, like, personal discomfort I'm having, so I- I get 
this one. Option two is sleeping on the roof in the middle of summer. You can still hear the comforting buzz of the crickets all around you, lulling you to sleep. I live and have lived as a child in a two-story home with a slanted roof. I am pretty scared of heights too, and I'm pretty sure if I tried sleeping on the roof, I would like roll off and probably die. That being said, that does sound like a funny way to die, so I'm kind of leaning towards that one now. The third option is wandering off in a grocery store by yourself because your parents are way too busy catching up with a friend they just happen to see and you're bored out of your mind. That's not a memory, that's like what happens to this day if whenever I go to a store with my parents. It's definitely relatable, but it's not really something I enjoy, I would say. Option four is staying up all night watching cartoons at a friend's house. And you're so sleepy, but you've never stayed up this late before, and you kind of have a sugar high from all the candy you've been eating. On the one hand, I do eat a lot of candy, especially at, like, friend's house, and I did as a child, but I, am. Um, even as a child, I stayed up late all the time. Like, I remember staying up till, like, 5 in the morning watching, like, really lame infomercials. It's somewhat relatable. Option 5 is spraying way too many perfumes on yourself when at a department store, knowing full well you're not going to purchase any of them. Now, I've never shopped for perfumes or colognes, but I'm kind of a nervous person. I, I would be nervous about people's reactions as if I came out of the perfume aisle just like drenched in scents. Definitely don't, doesn't exist for me as a memory. And our last option is walking through the empty hallways of your school at night after a dance or game that you just attended and thinking about how weird it would be if everyone slept in the morning and went to school at night. Just vampire things. Going to university now, I do kind of- I don't really go to school. I do kind of sleep in the mornings, and I don't really, like, go to school, quote-unquote, at night, but I definitely, like, just sleep through the mornings and do all my stuff later at night, so it's not really that interesting of a choice to me, it's just kind of my day-to-day -day life. Now that I think about it, I did work at my school when I was attending school, and I, so I got to stay behind and just like vibe in the empty school, and, and it's, it's pretty nice when you get to do it. Honestly, the image I got from the second choice of me like rolling off a roof in my sleep is funny, so I'm gonna go and pick that. Question six is what is something worth yearning for? Option one is a dream career, which genuinely I think is really important. Like having, I definitely have a job that I'm vying for and it, it really is, it really is genuinely helpful in like giving yourself some sort of direction. Even if you're not like fully convinced of it, just having an objective is a good drive for your day-to-day -day life. Option two is love, 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 love. Uh, no. Option three is a rare house plant. I like plants. I like the idea of having like growing rare plants, but I'm not very good at keeping them alive. So it's, I appreciate it as an ideal, but in practice, it's not something I would really trust myself with. Problem is if I had a rare house plant, I'd want to keep it in like good shape, but taking care of house plants is kind of like taking care of children, and I've killed a lot of children. Option four is getting to smile at strangers like we used to do before. I don't know where you're at, but that's not really the fitting of my old experience. Honestly, I like the privateness that wearing masks in public is giving you. Like, you can make just about any facial expression you want at people and they can't tell. It's very, I've personally found it very liberating. Like, I don't want them to see that. Option five is anything that's been on my mind for approximately 20 minutes minutes or more. I definitely get that. It's not quite as enjoyable though because I can tell that I'm kind of just having a temporary fixation, but it's still, it's still fun. 
you know, it's still fun to grow unhealthy obsessions, so that's that's a nice choice. And the last option is those beautiful vintage boots at the thrift shop. I like the aesthetics of, like, boots. I kind of get the, um, vibe, but I've never really had the presence of mind to go looking for boots at thrift shops. I get just... I see books and that just kind of, like, takes away my attention from anything else. I'm gonna go with the dream career for this one. It's not the most interesting choice, but I think it's the most stable. Alright, question seven is pick a good trope for media. And our first choice is friends to lovers. I think a better thing to explore would be like the converse, like lovers to friends would be an interesting, like a de-escalation. Second option is found family in the most unexpected places. I respect that, it's not really a character dynamic I am interested in. Option three is himbos. That's a good vibe right there. I definitely appreciate the aesthetic of himbos. I don't know if it is it's gonna be my first choice though. Our fourth option is the wretched character having to excuse themselves or hide somewhere private to break down and cry. I'm not personally super into like cathartic media, especially when it comes to like sadness. Aside from maybe like music, but that's not really relevant to this question. You don't have these kind of character tropes usually in music. I respect the purpose of this kind of trope in a character arc, but it's always really uncomfortable for me to watch. So so I, I'm not a big fan in terms of just like wanting to see it more in my media. Our fifth option is any and all healthy LGBTQ plus representation. Amen to that. We definitely support trans rights on this channel. I know that has to be a whole like thing, so. And our last option is I'm too pretty to consume media. That's a really good choice. I like that. If I didn't, if they didn't have the LGBTQ plus choice, I would definitely go with that. But I kind of got to prioritize representation first. Question eight is choose a tarot card that you identify with at this very moment in time. All right, so the first option is the moon. On the one hand, you've got a couple of dogs losing it and a lobster too. That's... It's definitely a creative choice. You've got a couple like nuclear power plant smokestacks in the background. I like all that, but the moon itself, it's drawn kind of like the sun and seems to be like shooting dandruff down. I don't know about that as a whole. The second option is the tower, which I think we can all identify with right about now. The third option is temperance. I don't know what this like angel doctor is doing. They're like transferring water between cups. I don't know why they didn't just put it in the right cup in the first place. So that's, um, that's a big deduction right there. The fourth option is the fool, which is a picture of some guy about to die. It's a good symbolic representation of me rolling off a roof to my death in my sleep, so that's probably, that's probably the thematic choice here. The fifth option is the high priestess. I don't understand what's happening in this picture. I guess the letters are there so blind people know what color the pillars are. I guess we have a B for black and J for white. It's, and there's some weird looking like fruits in the background. I'm, this is a scary picture. I don't like it. And our last option is the chariot. There's a couple of sphinxes in front. I appreciate the racial diversity among the sphinxes, but this guy's model is clearly clipping into the block. That's not, it doesn't seem like they spend a lot of time rendering this image. I'm going to go with the fool for thematic uh, consistency. Question nine is the world is, and our first option is much too big for someone like me. I don't, I'm not the kind of person who wants to know every single thing in the world. I'm glad it's big personally. Option two is full of kind-hearted people if you know where to look. I live in Canada. Seeing what's happening in the U.S., this definitely resonates for me personally. The third option is full of secrets that I plan to uncover. I'm not much of a detective myself. Option four is very confusing to navigate, which is relatable, I think, but unfortunately not thematically consistent given the whole, like, have an ideal career from before. Option five is ending eventually for everyone. Might as well make the best of it. I think we can get a bit of a through line with this one from, like, the roof and the fool, so that's nice. And the final option is just a circus. And we're all little clowns performing our little show unaware of anything that's real. Smiley face.
I'm not like super afraid of clowns like a lot of people are, but it's still like not an, a comfortable atmosphere for me. I'm gonna go with the through line. I think I'm kind of obligated to. Question 10 is an actual question. I was anticipating a comment box, but I guess they didn't have one for this question. Fair enough. So question 10 is pick an ideal time in your life to be in love, which is, I'm gonna answer right now, is never. Now I could go through all the options on this one, but I don't really feel like I would have a whole lot of good commentary. So I'm just gonna go ahead and skip straight to not interested. And let's just go ahead to see the results. My result is shapeshifter. You adapt to situations and people rather quickly, and you pull it off so effortlessly. How sexy of you. Still a little closed off, much to your many admirers dismay. You could probably carry around a tiny blade strapped to your thigh and nobody would question it. In fact, I think the drooling and gawking might increase by 30% at least. Uh, I'm kind of bummed we didn't get a um, mention about falling to your death in the description, but that's how it goes sometimes. Many admirers is not accurate, at least not yet. <laughs> so I did get the second least common. That's pretty good. I love how, how how disappointing would it be to get mysterious bookstore owner. Like a lot of these are, most of these are like supernatural. Like I, I've met mysterious bookstore owners before. Like that's, I mean, on the other hand, I guess if you did get that option, you can just go out there and live your dream. That's pretty cool. All right. Yeah. Thanks for watching. I'm not very comfortable with my outros, but I don't want to just cut it off.